Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return to having. When a man is living outdoors and transitioning from having a home into being more of a world traveler and a supporter of political uh, campaigns, he has to be able to go on the and be on the go, and that means traveling light. It usually means having a sport coat, it usually means having some uh, business suits, but it also means having an ability to walk and to do things right. In our lifetime, we of course have casual clothes that we're trying to handle and we're trying to deal with, but underneath those things, we have important aspects of our life. What I'm really talking about today, though, is what? Financial funding. Financial funding is one of those things that people need to have in their ministries, in their missions, and in their positions. But here's the truth. We also have to have couriers in the world who are trustworthy with money. The number one test of any law enforcement officer is whether or not he can deliver money that is assigned to him to deliver from a United States government official, and he delivers it fully. He doesn't take a cut. He doesn't take a sales commission. He doesn't do anything like that. The second thing in the world we have to have is the ability to receive proper food that meets not only our culinary needs but also our cellular health needs. There are people across America and around the world that have major allergies and people who don't have allergies really struggle with understanding what how highly allergic people can be. I can position myself in a lot of different ways but I unfortunately have one of those sensitive palates like many people today. We have a lot of foods that are changing because of how they're handled, how they're proselytized, and that's not really a great way to put it, but we have kosher foods, but we also have foods that have so much uh, carbon monoxide in them that people can't drink them, and I don't think I'm saying that right, but I'm allergic to carbon, so I don't do well with soft drinks because of the salt intake and other aspects of the chemistry that are put in them to make them taste so flavorfully great. But the truth is what my allergies are don't matter to you because you're not me. What matters to you is what your own food preferences, and your own food preferences are often what you try to buy for people like me who are living in the traveler mode, who are living in the adventurer mode, who are simply trying to move across the land to the best of their building after being a victim totally of cybercrime, identity theft, medical rights form, uh, medical rights fraud, medical rights malpractice, and frankly, people who are not medical doctors trying to practice some sort of medical health on me. I don't need your help with that. At age almost 53, coming up here next month, I don't even want that. I've had that happen to me over the last several years, which wasn't the lawful right of anyone in the people who tried to do that to me. First of all, just because you might be a biological sibling of me doesn't mean we have the same cellular health or the same food needs. I cannot handle certain foods, and that's 100% true. The minute that I eat them, I literally have a major blot, and that's TBMI for you. But the truth is that when you're trying to help someone like me, the best thing you can do is quite simple and quite straightforward. It's not very hard to carry a cash purchased gift card at a store that's literally located around someone like me. The reason it has to be cash purchased and you have to check it after they do it is to make sure that the card cannot be recharged by any employee who wants to take it back in once it's expired. I encourage people who get gift cards not to do that for a couple reasons. That one, they, the gift card can be reused and therefore we have less plastic in the environment and in the in the trash receptacles and in our grounds basically where a lot of our our uh, old items get can be found. But it's also because it allows you the safety of carrying it and you don't have to worry about someone accusing you of trying to do something immoral and illegal. At the same time, another way to handle it is to provide someone just some cash, some paltry cash. It's not that hard. We really are a cash-based society, and it's the challenge of cash versus a credit card, of course, is that cash is sometimes hard to manage, hard to monitor for people who are under a lot of stress like me, who are dealing with a lot of stupid shit like me, and who are dealing with the constant attitude of, I'm going to look for this item that I'm about to utilize, or I'm about to give to someone because I was told to give it to them, and it's not there. Because the liars of the force, the liars of our land, the liars across many nations, peoples who have no ethics, no morals, no concept of God, have stolen them from me. I am a man who purchases things for my life, just like you are a person who purchases things for your life. And when I can't find the things that I'm looking for and I'm finding things back in my bags like trash that I've already thrown away, it makes me really mad. It is an immoral game that these people are doing. But at the same time, there are total strangers that hear one piece of information and they are so fucking curious about a life that they go hunting for it. And you just want to say, I'm sorry, I didn't invite you into my life. So when you're approaching a total stranger, there's two ways to go about it. It's true that people sometimes send their children at me and I usually have to refuse because I don't like that. 
I don't want to be solicited by a child. Some kids get away with it if their heart, their mind, and their soul are in the right mode, that their parent has really prepared them for that conversation. It's also sort of foolish for a parent to do that with a total stranger, but hey, if you assess me and feel like that I'm the guy to do it with, you're, you're absolutely right. I am the guy to send a child at, but I might not take it. So that means that you've gotten in your mind that I'm going to do this, but then you've gotten out of your mind because you didn't listen to the regard of me. I'm an adult man, and you're an adult of some kind. If you're trying to teach your child how to do things and walk up with your child, which I've had happen before, which is absolutely right, because then you're right there to hear that conversation, you're right there to learn something in that conversation, and you're right there to shut the fuck up the whole time so the child gets the educational lesson. And I know how to do that. I've done that many times. But I've also told people that if you're really trying to help someone like me, Walking up and saying, hey, here's $10, use it any way you like, there is no strings attached to me, is the absolute best promise you can make to someone like me. You don't have the right to use your money to financially abuse someone, to steal things from their pack, or to sexually assault them, or to do things when they're at, they're at night, like cutting their beard off and doing some sort of black attack. And I'm referring to the satanic world where you think you're going to be in control over me or anyone like me who's in struggle. It's immoral. We already have a whole impoverished community that has such an illegal, immoral, and illicit network. It's disgusting to me. I'm literally talking on the phone, sometimes loudly because I'm passionate about what's going on for me, and I've got some old hag who has never made a life at all literally thinking that I'm talking to her and, and responding to me. I don't like that. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to pick up a girlfriend from someone in the streets. Not going to happen. I have, in my lifetime, over the last year and a half, literally only have about have met only about three stunningly beautiful women that made me go, whoa. Because my heart, mind, and soul is committed in a long-term relationship to someone that the Lord promised to me. And openly, I still have a heart, mind, and soul for someone who passed away from me. So that's my right. You don't have the right to interfere with men who literally know how to make a life, have a wife, deal with a spouse, be a father, now a grandfather, and openly, I'm not going to play with you. I'm looking for a life partner, not only in business, but in personhood and in intimate relations. And I don't fucking need some total stranger thinking they're going to match make me with someone. But you know what? There'll be some motherfucking white man who said, bullshit, I want to do that to you. No, go live your fucking life. If you want to help people like me, the best thing you can do is practice your own level of philanthropy. You can put your whole life in life balance, but that's up to you, not up to me. But when you're trying to help someone like me, giving me a paltry couple dollars doesn't really help me do anything. You see, I need to have to, because of how, many, how much weight the Lord has helped me to lose, not because I'm homeless, because He offered that to me. He offered a, a secret of how to find the right food that's perfect for my body that keeps me totally in alignment. So I don't really want you to come up and give me your food because I don't know you, I don't trust you, it's a time of COVID, why would I want to get food from a total stranger? I barely get food correctly from local restaurants. But I go when God tells and leads me, and I might be bait for the people who are in the FDA going, okay, we got a problem here. Or maybe I'm, I'm bait for something else marvelous like Homeland Security says, I don't know about you, but you don't belong here. But the reality is, I'm not the one doing that. Other people are taking advantage of what I can discover. But here's the reality. What we're really talking about is, do you believe that your life deserves the dignity of food? Because how you treat someone like me proves who you are, not only to you, but to God, but to the world. So if you're trying to help someone like me, think about how to best help me. Two questions are quite simple. How can I help you today to accomplish something you need every day? Or how can I help me to understand what you're going through? So that I can talk about these situations because someday I'm going to be elderly and out of work, out of job, and out of money. 